Last time on MasterChef, oh. the home cooks faced a mystery box challenge that was alive oh, whoa. and pinching. <laughs> Aran's victory, possibly one of the best dishes you've ever had, gave her the chance to save Francis from certain elimination. You have dodged the biggest bullet. And I know I owe Aran big time. As a result, the time is done. It was Kira who was sent home. Tonight, love is in the air for a Master Chef wedding. Yes, who'll be cooking all the food? It's you. But it isn't long before the home cooks are filing for divorce. I don't know how else to put sorry. You're not sorry at all. I wasn't like from day one. But I'm going to stand here and be abused. And one more hopeful leaves the Master Chef kitchen. How the hell are we supposed to pull this off? The remaining home cooks have landed on the picturesque coastline of Southern California, where they will battle it out in an intense high stakes team challenge. I've been cooking my whole life. I cooked pretty much to save my life. I lost almost 100 pounds when I was 14. So all that practice and that knowledge that I obtained cooking makes me know that I can be the next master chef. This is definitely a step up from the army base because I see beautiful beaches and scenery. I'm wondering, are we like cooking for maybe surfers? Good to see you all. Come on down, guys. The three judges are standing under this beautiful frame of fabric and flowers, and I'm like, oh my god, this is somebody's wedding. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning How are you feeling? Great. Great chef. Look at this stunning location. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, in under two hours, there will be a wedding in this very spot between a stunning bride called Joplin and her handsome groom, Mike. And I bet you can guess who'll be cooking all the food <laughs> for their amazing day. Oh. Oh. Uh, that's right. It's you. We are catering a wedding. Ah, it's so exciting, but also terrifying because there's a lot of pressure to make this amazing. You'll be responsible for feeding Joplin and Mike's 120 guests on the most important day of their entire lives. They want the theme of their wedding to be upscale ocean fare. The bride and groom want a scallop appetizer and a sea bass entree. It's up to each team to decide what to do with them. Everyone will have two hours to prep and cook your dishes. We'll get feedback from the bride and groom and their guests, but ultimately it's us who will be deciding which team has won this challenge and which team will be facing the dreaded pressure test and elimination. Leslie and Francis L, because you made the best donuts in the last challenge, today you'll both be team captains. Please come up here. Leslie, because you had the best donut in the last challenge, you get to pick first. Well, this person proved to me his leadership skills are right on the money. He knows how to follow direction. Christian. Christian. Wow. Yes. Let's go. Right, Francis. Uh, I'm going to pick this person because you have to have fun in your kitchen, so I'm going to choose Big Willie. Big Willie. Wow. Leslie. Francis P. Francis P. Let's go. Uh, Francis L. I'm going to choose Courtney. Choosing my team is so important. It's like a chess game. Leslie, third pick. Tyler. It's like making his choices for him. I know what he's going to choose already. Cutter. And I know it's going to cause chaos in that kitchen. Daniel. Daniel, come on down. Francis, Al. Victoria. Leslie. Christine is my next person. Next up is Elizabeth. Wow. OK, Leslie. I do not want to be on Leslie's team. He does not know how to communicate with people. Tyron. Tyron. Tyron, I'm Iran. sorry. Tyron, I'm sorry. Iran, I apologize. Iran. I apologize. I'm sorry. And of course, I get picked to be on Leslie's team. Uh, Francis L. Dan. Dan, wow, let's go. Leslie. Jordan. Last pick, Francis L. You're picking for both teams. I'm going to choose Elise. Thank wow. you. I'm used to this. You would not be on my last pick, let me tell you. Please join Leslie's team. Thank you. Team captains, join your teams. Thank you. 
It's a nightmare and a dream all wrapped up into one. In my kitchen, they're all going to be dancing around to classical music, and Leslie Simmons will be like hardcore rock and roll, people fighting. It's going to be incredible. All right, you guys ready? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Your time starts now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Go, go. Both teams will have just two hours to devise and prepare their dishes before serving their appetizers to the bride, groom, and their 120 guests. I'm a little bit nervous because this is the kind of challenge we normally have further down the line where they're a little bit more confident, but more importantly, a little bit more experienced experience. because this is a big one. The expectation is huge. Yeah. With the clock ticking, each team must find a unique way to prepare the scallops and sea bass for today's wedding. For the starter, I want to do three scallops, but I want a bed of arugula with some papaya in there. I want it to be with a pineapple spicy kick okay. around the sauce. This is going to go so well because Francis already sees it on the plate. He's like, this is what I want, and we just have to bring it to life. All right, let's get to work. While Francis confidently commands the blue team. I want you to keep an eye on that fish. The red team's Captain Leslie has an altogether different approach to leadership. Okay, so um, scallops, I was thinking something on the top, maybe a mango salsa. I like that. So what are we serving with the sea bass? Could you do a purple potato mash? Yeah, I can. Okay. My strategy is I don't want to take control of the situation. I want to hear everybody's opinion, and I want to just try and figure out what direction we want to go in. Everybody, let's get to work. we got to figure out what's what. As the red team begins prep under Leslie's unconventional leadership, the finishing touches are being completed in the reception area. Morning. And Gordon gives his best wishes to the bride before her big day. You and Mike are huge foodies, right? You know, we are the ones who feed everybody. We're the right. ones who have these giant parties. Everyone comes to us for food, so expectations are going to be huge. So, uh, have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Back in the kitchen, the blue team is united and focused. Captain, the blue team. Here you go. How are you feeling? Fantastic. You control? Absolutely. Good. Run me through the menu, please. We're doing arugula, papaya, jicama salad. I love the idea. How are you cooking the scallops? Uh, scallops, we're doing pan fried over there. Victoria's got control of that. Entree, see, bus. We're doing a beurre blanc, but with lemongrass and purple cauliflower puree. Uh, young man, you stand on it. Keep it up. Thank you, chef. While the blue team has impressed Chef Ramsay with their teamwork and menu, the red team is having difficulty getting on the same page. Right, uh, Captain, where are you? Yes, sir. Explain the menu. Um, we're doing scallops on a, 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 a pea uh, puree. Avocado. With a, an avo pea and avocado puree. And we're going to do a little uh, fennel uh, on the side. On top. On top. On top. And then, Sounds like stuff. Uh, Francis Beach, do you know the menu? More yes, than the he knows. He knows the, the menu more than I do. Oh, I'm, hold on, I'm, yes. Who's the captain? I'm the captain. Okay, entree. Yes. Talk about the entree. Sea bass. Uh, the sea bass. We're gonna. Uh, we got. Uh, uh, do the uh, red team know what they're doing? No, we're, we're, they we're, don't. We're, 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 we're still trying to get our groove. I mean, seriously. Can you have a meeting and get your together now? Okay. This is embarrassing. Talk to me. Everybody's walking away. Yeah, Talk to me. It. Leslie's panicking. He's all over the place. He's going, Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Anybody need anything? We're finished with the ginger. No more ginger. What? Talk to me. You're supposed to be telling us what to do. Why do we got to talk to you? Talk to me. I don't know what the f is happening right now. While Captain Leslie struggles to keep the red team afloat, things are picture perfect on the beach for Mike and Joplin's wedding day. I honor you as my husband forevermore. Would you like to kiss your bride? <laughs> yes. Please do. <laughs> as the newlyweds make their way to the reception, Leslie's leadership style is making waves amongst the red team. Put the strainer in the pot. Okay. No, put the strainer in that pot. Leslie, you need to stop yelling, okay? You're not helping our team at all right now. You're wasting a lot of time. No, I'm not. Nobody seems to be listening. I'm trying my best. I've never done this before. I've never led people who didn't want to be led. Let's go. We are getting lost. Leslie, get it together. Let's go. In this team challenge, our home cooks must prepare a scallop appetizer and sea bass entree for 120 wedding guests. 
as newlyweds Joplin and Mike celebrate the happiest day of their lives. Back in the kitchen, Leslie's lack of leadership has left the red team in no mood to party. This is out of freaking control, man. Leslie is absolutely breaking down as a human being. He is unfit for the job. And we've really got to do something extreme to turn this around. Come here, come here. This is your ship now, OK? All right, guys, guys, guys. everybody here right now! Guys, come over. The best idea is appoint Francis B, the guy who had a successful team last time around. I'm taking over. You guys, if you have any questions, ask me. All of a sudden, they all decided that I am out of control and I don't know what I'm doing. Francis, you think you can do a better job? Fine. I don't care what it takes. If it means me getting a demotion and not being team captain anymore, but at the end of the day, we win this, that's all I'm concerned about. This is how we're doing it. Main dish. We scrap the potatoes all in all. We got the sea bass, right? We're going to have to figure out how to control that flat top. I am competitive. I was playing golf on a professional level for a little bit and having to compete with all these other people that have years and years of practice. Same thing in the kitchen. I'm going to be cool and calm. I got this. We got to get working on the vinaigrette, too. As soon as Francis B takes over as team captain, things started moving in the right direction. As the red team makes up for lost time, out in the reception area, the bride and groom are taking their seats, and the 120 guests are excitedly waiting for the start of service. Red team, blue team, five minutes left. Remember, a fine dining experience on the beach. I need perfect scallops. We'll take the best of the whole bunch. I need two appetizer dishes right here. You have less than a minute, two app dishes now. Francis, let's do it. I got it. Yeah, I'm waiting for the scouts. Let me Scallops! get scouts up here. Let's go! Leslie, Leslie, that's okay. We don't need more screaming. All right, bride and groom, scallops. Coming up, coming up. All right, Captain, are these good to go? Yeah. Perfect. While Francis finally has the red team on track, the blue team is still working to complete their scallop appetizer for the bride and groom. All right, let's get the brides going. So we're plating in this happy chaos because the plates look so good, but it's very difficult. But they all have to look perfect because this is a wedding challenge. It has to be memorable. Go. You good, with, you good with these? You approve? Absolutely. As Joe makes his way to the reception with appetizers for the bride and groom, both teams continue to plate their scallop dishes for all the guests. The winner of today's challenge will be decided by the judges who will be considering each team's performance in the kitchen along with the feedback of the newlyweds and their guests. So we have, uh, from the blue team and the red team, the two teams will be cooking here. We have uh, seared scallops of the blue team, and these are the seared scallops of the red team. The blue team is serving seared scallops with an arugula salad, watermelon radishes, and a pineapple sauce. The red team is serving seared scallops with a pea and avocado puree and a mango salsa. So have a taste, and you'll tell me what you think about it. The blue dish is excellent. There's excellent. a lot of flavor going on there. You think the blue this team's is, the winner? Yeah, I mean, you don't is, agree? Yeah. Really? Oh, my God. I think the red avocado actually works. It's the first really? domestic battle. <laughs> <laughs> With the bride and groom sharing a difference of opinion on the appetizers, the competition is wide open, and replacement Captain Francis has the red team firing on all cylinders. You guys, this is looking good, all right? Despite how crazy it is back in the kitchen, we might actually be able to pull this off because our dishes are looking great, and they're actually getting out in time. Last table, red team. Let's go. All right, let's take it up. As the red team finishes the appetizer service on a high note, the blue team is having trouble completing their orders. Just, just, just touch on top of that, please. Go on, quickly. No one's gonna bite you. Blue team, the scallops are stone cold. Nine scallops. I need nine fresh scallops, please. I've got 11 fixing to come to you. Give me a couple minutes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. The dish is too complicated. The scallop dish, as we're putting it together, there's so many elements, it's very hard to get 10 plates to leave at once. Service. Finally, the blue team gets their last table of appetizers out to the dining room where the wedding guests are now giving Joe a big thumbs up for both teams' dishes. Did anyone enjoy the red team scallops? Hands in the air. 
Full house. You guys loved it. Awesome. Thank you. I really like the blue team scallops. They're very soft, very juicy, very moist. As the appetizer portion of service comes to an end, the competition is too close to call. Meanwhile, the red team has hit a problem while doing a practice plating for their sea bass entree. We're just trying to figure out how exactly we're going to make this look. But there was another garnish on there. It was the potatoes, oh, and yeah. we decided that wasn't a good idea. Did we not diverse and come up with another starch? We didn't. We, we can't just put broccolini and the bass on there. I'm not in charge anymore, so I don't, I don't know what's going on. Six minutes to go. What can we do in that time? Something that you can do quickly. Hurry up. Let's go. Red team, get it together, let's go! With entree service set to begin, the red team must quickly devise a side component for their sea bass. So let's do tomatoes, let's get cucumbers. some cucumbers going, and we can mix it up with the fennel and they'll be fine. Yeah. Can we hurry up, please? Yeah, okay, guys, let's do this. With their dish finally set, the red team is serving a seared sea bass with spicy broccolini and an heirloom tomato and cucumber salad. While the blue team is serving a seared sea bass, with purple cauliflower puree, white asparagus, and a lemongrass verbla sauce. Four minutes to go, red team. As the red team rushes to finish the new side for their entree, the blue team has regained their composure. Bride and groom fish. As we're placing the sea bass, again, it's complicated. They take time to be put together, but they look bloody good. We're ready to serve the bride and groom. With the blue team in complete control of their entree service, the red team is still scrambling to plate their sea bass for the newlyweds. Bride and groom first, please. Jordan, why are you zoning out? What's wrong? Jordan, what are you doing? Everybody was busy working, and Jordan was just walking around. Jordan, get out of the way, like dog in the middle of the road. Get out of the way. Come on, get involved. Guys, let's go. This is going to be ice cold. Ready? Let's go. The red team finally completes their first round of entrees. And Joe will now serve the sea bass from both teams to the bride and groom. Okay, so we have the sea bass of the red team, and we have the sea bass of the blue team. So have a taste and tell me what you think about it. So, do you prefer the sea bass of the blue team or the sea bass of the red team? For me, definitely the sea bass of the blue team. When you get a bite of everything, the bourbon with the potato, it's a perfect bite. And for you, Mike, and divide it again. Red team for me. It tastes great. It's got a nice sear on it. Red, Red sea bass is way better. A house divided against itself <laughs> cannot stand. <laughs> I do love you. I love you too. Back in the kitchen, the red team is finishing up their final table of entrees, but Christian is concerned by teammate Tyler's appetite. Come on, guys, keep it going. Keep it going. Let's go. I'm Tyler. No more eating. No more eating. I'm I don't want to see nobody else eat. Tyler. Yes, chef. We'll eat after we serve the <laughs> wedding. Let's go. We're here to work, not eat. I need beautifully cooked fish. I have eight coming up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're short two portions. We don't have any more fish. The red team, what's wrong? We were short fish. What do you mean we're short fish? How many portions are we short? Two portions were short. Two portions. Only thing that can go through my mind, Tyler. Like, where is my fish? I saw you eating it, and it was in his damn stomach. So we're gonna have to send out two guests with half portions of fish, because the big portions there, you're gonna have to cut in half. I'm not serving them nothing, guys, huh? We're doomed. We're going down. And it was like the Titanic. We were seeking. Service, please. Last table. With the red team limping over the finish line, the blue team confidently sends out their final orders of sea bass. Okay, good. Service, please. Service, please. Thank you. All right, guys. Good job, y'all. Yeah, good job. We're done. Let's go, guys. We knocked it out of the park. There's no way we're losing this thing. Good job. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Complicated, but it was right. good. Despite the strong performance by the blue team, over in the reception area, the reviews of the sea bass are mixed. I'm eating the blue team's sea bass. It looked really great, but I just wish it had a little bit more of a kick in the flavor department. So you got to taste the sea bass of the red team as an entree. How was it? You know, I think everybody's probably pretty impressed by this. By the, by the red team. All right. 
as Mike and Joplin's wedding celebration continues. The judges debate the day's performance by both teams. There was bumps in both kitchens. But I have to say, for such a, an important day and a big challenge, I was really proud of both of our teams today. Yeah. Having settled on a winner, the judges ask the bride to deliver the verdict by tossing the winning team her bouquet. Joplin, please take the floor. Thank you. We put our heart and soul into this challenge, and I feel great about what we've put out. Even though it was this catastrophic from the get-go, all of that aside, our components came together, and we've got a shot. Now, the winning team was three, two, one. Blue team! I'm in shock. I can't believe it. This win takes me to the next level. Now everyone looks at me as a serious contender. Well done, blue team. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Unfortunately, red team. There are two kitchens standing behind you that need clearing up. You go back and tidy up the mess you left on the beach. Thank you. Congratulations, blue team. The feeling of losing sucks. At least one person is going home, and so I need to make sure that that person is not me. Tensions are high right now on the red team because now we got to go through a pressure test. And I did feel some responsibility for a certain amount of, of, of what happened here. But for starters, I'm sorry I didn't turn out to be what you guys wanted. I'm not perfect, okay? This is a learning curve for me. You have no communication, like, skills at all. So can I say something, or are you just going to jump in every time because you're an 18-year-old and that's what you do? Hey, you know what? You know what? You can disrespect me all you want, okay? Because that's what teenagers do. Okay? So grow up and, and grow some balls. Leslie, you're 56. She's 18. Don't compare with her. And from the moment I pick her, she gave me this look of, I don't want to be on your team. No, why? It's because you mispronounced my name. And well, I'm sorry. sorry. You know I'm what? apologizing. No, I don't know how else to put sorry. S. O R R Y. That's down. sorry. You're not sorry at all. You're being really condescending right now, and it's of not course I'm condescending because I'm tired of getting beat up by everybody here. Okay, but I'm not going to stand here let's and be long. abused. Let's say okay, long. enough let's is say enough. Long. She had no respect for me from day one, and if you want respect, you have to earn it. And if I give it to you, you I damn better get it back. That's how the real world works. Please, may I thank you? That's how I was brought up. Not crying and running this. second pressure test and I haven't won a team challenge and these are the consequences. They're called pressure tests for a reason. It makes you feel uncomfortable. It's the unknown. And the worst thing about a pressure test is in the end, someone's going home and I hope it's not me. Yesterday, we challenged you home cooks to serve 120 guests at a beautiful beachfront wedding. Blue team, you guys were phenomenal and that's why you're up there on the balcony safe from elimination. Red team, after tasting everything and talking to the bride and groom and their guests at the wedding, we decided that your performance was infinitely inferior to the blue team. That means you will be facing the dreaded pressure test. Yeah, I mean, let's start off with the captain. Um, in your mind, where did it go wrong? Pretty much uh, me becoming captain. I learned a very valuable lesson. It's a big price to pay yes, for your lesson because one of the nine members on your team, at least one, will be going home. I'm not perfect. I don't know what else you want from me. Right. There are nine cooks standing in front of us. But not all of you are going to have to cook tonight. Only three of you are. <gasps> what? What? Leslie. You were the team captain. Captains, leaders have to make big and very serious decisions. Which three members of your team do you think should compete in tonight's pressure test? They threw me under the bus, so I figured now it's my turn to return the favor. I think I'm going to start off with Christian. He seems to know everything and do everything, so I'd like to see him perform. 
Second choice, please. Uh, Daniel, because I was on his team and I killed myself for him, no matter what. Wow. And he did nothing for me except complain about me. And, uh, Iran. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Why Iran? She and I don't seem to see eye to eye, and I have the choice. And I can. Coward. Like, honestly, what the hell, dude? If he was a real man, he would have chosen himself to cook in the pressure test. Interesting choices. Fortunately for them, it's not your decision. <laughs> <laughs> We will be deciding which three of you will face the pressure test. Oh, geez. I mean, this can't get any worse. First, they nailed me to a cross on a beach. Now they're going to burn me at a stake. Each one of us will choose one home cook who we think did the worst job in the wedding challenge. Gordon? Easy. Leslie, you led your team to disaster, completely fragmented from the get-go. You will face tonight's dreaded pressure test. Good. Bye. Great. Right. This person didn't contribute anything to their team. They look lost and might as well have not been on the team at all. And that person is Jordan. Sure. My third pick is difficult. It is someone who stepped up on the back of Leslie's poor leadership, but ultimately failed. Francis Biondi. I had appointed Francis B as a team captain, and to see him have to take the fall, I feel horrible. The rest of you, you should all be pretty ashamed of your performance, but you're safe for now. Please head up to the balcony. Go. So, for this pressure test, you're gonna have to work with an ingredient that practically defines this country. What's in here is the quintessential American protein. Steak. Steak. Mm -hmm. Medium rare. A ruby red in the middle, slowly turning into brick red, and then the sear on the outside. Steak frites. This dish may have started as a European bistro standard, but trust me, America owns it now. Now, you can just tell how good it is just with the naked eye. The knife slides through it like butter. And look, a perfect medium rare. Oh, so hungry. Oh, that's beautiful. We want a steak that's perfectly seasoned, perfectly seared, and perfectly medium rare. And don't overlook those fries. I see steak and frites, and I'm just like, all right, you either cook a perfect steak, or you're going home. That's about as straightforward as you can get. It's time to go to your station. You have just 30 minutes to make us an amazing plate of steak frites. In front of you, you all have the exact same ingredients. One stunning New York strip, butter, garlic, thyme, russet potato, and some fresh parsley. At the end of this pressure test, at least one of you three will be going home. Got it? Yes, chef. chef. Your 30 minutes starts now. I feel like I got run over by a truck, but I wasn't expecting anything less. It's all part of Master Chef Kitchen. You want to win it, you got to be in it. I'm in it. When they say pressure test, they're not kidding. There's only three people down here, so the chances of leaving are great. I don't really cook steak often, but when I do, it's usually a nice big hunk of meat like this. I think I'm the best cook out of the three here. So, what are we looking for in steak frites? First thing I'm looking for is the sear, that intense char. How do you get the crunch without overcooking the inside? You have to be precise and turning it. Two and a half minutes, two and a half minutes. You got to cook it on the back as well. Render the fat off. Really important. Two screen potatoes can be tricky, right? How do you cut them? They have to be cut evenly. One thick end, one thin end. You got soggy fries. Yeah. But a lot of times they'll stick and then they yeah. won't fry evenly. So you sure. gotta make sure each one's broken apart. But well, the secret here tonight is having the confidence to cook the fries literally with 90 seconds to go. So they stay crisp. What is he doing? Doing a test bed. Leslie, so now you're out of the team, you're working on your own. I don't mind being on my own. Yeah. Don't mind being I'm a big boy. 
That looks delicious. You're gonna baste it with that? Oh, now? yes. Some butter and some herbs and some garlic. Wow. That's a very sophisticated technique you're doing right now. So, Leslie, this will infuse, but watch some of that, that garlic as it starts getting brown in the high yes, heat. It'll it's gonna get bitter. bitter and burn everything. Yes. Who's most likely to leave tonight? Probably Jordan, because I think he hasn't as cooked as many steaks as I have. <laughs> right, Jordan, how are you feeling? Feeling very good. I may not have made as many steaks as Leslie, but I make them a lot better. Okay, don't get defensive, get even. What are you doing? I'm basting it. It's going to take a little bit of time, and I want to have ample time to rest and have right. those juices to develop. Okay, so it doesn't sound that hot from here. Is the sizzling sufficient? It's not high, yeah. I got the heat all the way up. You've got to get that nice hot sear. Yes, are chef. you staying in the competition tonight? Yes, chef. Good luck. Thank you. Francis, what are you doing tonight? That smells good. That's looking good. Don't overcook that. Remember, once you put it on that rack, it will continue to cook. Mm -hmm. Just feel it, touch it. Remember, mid rare you want it to feel just like this, right? And at the end of the day, better a little under than over. How about the fries? I'm definitely not going to overlook these fries. Try to get a good color and toss them in some salt and some parsley. Yep. I want to make them perfect fries for you guys. So. Good luck. Thank you. Just under 10 minutes remaining. Oh, yeah, baby. Leslie's steak looks amazing. He's basting it in butter now. I think he's got the right cook on it. He might be in good shape. I love that herb butter. How's Jordan doing? Yeah, Jordan's slightly flustered. Pan wasn't hot. Pan wasn't hot. That's like the biggest mistake you can make. Yeah. I'm nervous that Francis cooked that steak off so early. So early, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna continue to cook. And my big concern with Francis B is that his fries are already cooked. We're just under 10 minutes together, they're gonna be stone cold. Francis, did you think about doing a compound butter to put on top of it? Never done it. You have all those nice herbs. Get your butter going, get it in the blast chiller. You can, like, mix it? Yeah, you, you just, just you, yeah, you smash it in, then Do you roll not it in. Give your competition the help. I can't believe this. There's a one in three chance of me going home, and I'm pissed. Francis B's getting all his damn help, and I'm, I'm sitting here like a sitting duck. Francis, put a glove on and use your hand. Those people, they didn't like me from day one because I'm the old guy. But if I go home over Francis B because of a compound butter, this will be an atrocity. In tonight's pressure test, Leslie, Jordan, and Francis must cook steak frites to a perfect medium rare temperature or risk being sent home from the Master Chef kitchen. Just under seven minutes to go. Francis, just mix it up in your hand. Perfect. Put it in a ball, put it in the freezer, and while you're there, go get a plate. I'm going to do my best to help Francis B because I don't like Leslie. <laughs> Nobody came into this with a preconceived notion that he was a he has proven that to us over time. Dude is a I just can't stand the guy. Leslie has not been the popular kid, but me and him are really close. Go, Leslie. Willie, I love you, man. Love you, too. You're the best. Team Leslie all day, America. Feel good. My steak, I think, came out really nice. I just have to make sure these fries are perfect, which I think they're, they're there. Feeling good. I'm feeling good. It definitely is the most important steak I've ever made in my life. Last two minutes. For at least one of you, this is the last time you will be cooking in the Master Chef kitchen. I'm worried about Jordan. I mean, it looks like it didn't render the fat. He's going to present the steak with a big yellow piece of grizzly fat on it. That's a ticket out of here. 30 seconds to go. Come on, guys. Finishing touches. Come on. Francis B is torching his steak. What? I've never seen that. Never. Sorry, I've I have never it. seen that. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands in the air. Well done. All three of you. Please bring your dishes down to the front. Let's go. I looked down at my plate, and I'm happy with it. I got a nice year on the steak. Looking around, I definitely think that if anyone's going to go home, it's Leslie, because it just looks boring and underwhelming. OK. What's the secret behind the steak frit? A lot of love and um, the secret butter sauce on top. Why are there raw herbs on the plate? Just for design, no, no reason. So. Great color on the steak. Medium rare, right? Medium rare.
or look away? No. Why should I? You confident? Oh, yeah. Nailed. You tell me. They could be a little crispier. Come on. But they're soft and yeah. limp. You know that. So, steak is done beautifully. Okay. But unfortunately, your fries are dreadful. Thank you. Thank you. How about the fries? Uh, dreadful. It's really? Okay. How good is the steak, though? Steak is enough. It's perfect. perfect. Yeah, it's, it's, it is absolutely nice. money. Good. Mm -hmm. How are you, Chef? How are you? Good. I think the plating on this is beautiful. Thank you. The steak looks like it's got a nice sear. However, the fat layer that's over here on the side, it doesn't look like you really rendered it. And now when I carve this, what do you think it's going to look like? I'm confident it's a medium rare. So I think that's a little more medium. Even cookery on each side, which is super important, but it did go, you know, a couple Just minutes longer. longer yeah. Exactly. Still got some juiciness to it. It's got good flavor, but it's definitely not medium rare. It doesn't have that melt in your mouth quality to it. And now your frites. They can use a little more color. Feel that, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, don't, you don't want like a flaccid potato action going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Seasoned beautifully, though. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, the steak not rendered, overcooked. Overcooked. Medium, mm -hmm. was over medium, yeah. Mm -hmm. My only hope now is that Francis did something overdone or underdone in his steak for me to say in this competition. What do you think, Francis? I'm feeling good. Is it a compound butter? What's it is the a butter? compound butter. You're the only one who did that. What were you doing with the torch there? I was just uh, blasting the compound butter so that it would melt over the steak. So we want medium rare. We Sweet. want a nice crust, which you seem to have. On the inside, though, the heart of the steak has to be red. It's a brick red. It's a pink. Okay. It's the crust on the outside. I can't even watch Joe cut in my steak right now. I'm so nervous. This has to be perfect. Otherwise, I'm going home. What do we got? So we want medium rare. The heart of the steak has to be red. It's a brick red. It's a pink. Okay. It's the crust on the outside. What do we got? That's medium. Yeah, because to be a perfect medium rare, you would need to have a little bit of red on the inside. Yeah. Let's have a taste. The sear is nice. What did you uh, flavor it with? Uh, thyme, rosemary, butter, garlic. Just basted it. Good flavor. You can taste all the herbs. Although it's not medium rare like Jordan's, you're right about the same temperature you two. Now, since we are neck and neck, the fries are going to mean a lot here. Would you put some herbs in your fries? I did, I did. I put thyme and toasted rosemary. Yeah. They're very crispy, they're good. Yeah. I like the herbs. Mm -hmm. Some of these bigger pieces are a little soggy. Why didn't you pull this out? I did not see that. Too bad. Thank you. So it's the same, it's medium. It's not medium rare. The most important thing is the cook. The cook yeah. really has nice things. All the of flavor. So really, if, if Leslie did a true medium rare, then he's on the top of the heap. Then you gotta, we gotta decide between the other between two. The other two. Francis and I are neck and neck, and I want this so bad that I am just hoping that they like mine better. Leslie, Jordan, Francis, we asked each of you to create a perfect steak frit. One of you did nail that steak perfectly. Congratulations. Leslie. I don't know if it's your life experience or having eaten many more steaks. And these other two, but you nailed medium rare, the char, everything. Good job. Please go join your best friends up there on the balcony. 
I deserve to be up on that balcony. I mean, that steak looked perfect. As to Jordan and Francis B, good luck. Francis, Jordan, neither of you nailed that steak. You both overcooked the steak. However, there was one that actually tasted better. Better seasoning, better fries, almost in a way that it was cooking with confidence. The person staying in MasterChef is Francis B. Say goodbye to Jordan and head up to the gallery. Uh, Jordan, young man, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, you may not have progressed the top 15, top 10. However, you are a talented young man, 19 years of age. You've got the whole life in front of you. Thank you. I seriously hope you get yourself in the business as soon as possible. And keep your head up high. I am so happy to be here and going back home. I can hold my head up high. Well done. Thank you. Come and say goodbye. Good job, Jordan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Way to go, Jordan. This competition has been the greatest experience of my life. Best Chef's taught me so much about the fundamentals of cooking, and it has really laid the foundation for me to just grow even more. When you go in with such high hopes and such expectations of yourself, um, it's hard when it's all, it's all over. Next time on MasterChef, the kitchen is graced by two returning champions. Last year's winner, Luca, <laughs> and our first ever MasterChef Junior winner, Alexander. It was like royalty walked in. But it's one devastating mistake that takes center stage. For the very first time, someone has brought us a dish that they did not cook. One potato, two potato.